In this video, we're going to take a look at the permissions model that's new in Android 6. This includes check self permission and also on request permission result. Another title for this video could be my application crashes as soon as I click the camera. And there are many reasons why the application could crash when you when you try to toggle the camera with an implicit intent. This is one, it might not be the only reason, so if this doesn't solve your problem, I apologize, but this is the most likely cause. This is especially true if you have an application that you've written for an older version of Android, something like Lollipop or anything before that, and then you're running it on Marshmallow or a newer version and you find suddenly the camera doesn't work. So let's take a look at what happens. This should toggle the camera and you see it obviously does not. The first thing I want to do is make sure that what I'm describing is solving your problem. So I'm going to go to Android Monitor and we will see some error messages in here and what we're looking for, if I can scroll this up just a bit, is this block right here, not just text that looks like this but specifically we're looking for this text that I'm highlighting, which is Java Lang security exception permission denial starting intent, and then it will say with revoked permission uh, Android image capture, which I have there, sorry, at the end. Okay, what's confusing about this, especially if you are an existing Android developer from long ago, is if you go to the Android manifest, you will see that we have indeed granted permission camera to this application, still not working and that can really drive you nuts. Well, the trick is that Android 6 in introduces runtime permissions and also, so runtime permissions are when you ask the user for a permission right at the time that it's needed. Additionally, uh, Android 6 has some considerations around letting an implicit intent or an external application that you're bringing into your application, allowing an implicit intent to inherit the permissions of your application. That can be a bit dangerous. Maybe, for example, the user has given one application very generous permissions. Maybe the user has restricted permissions to some social networking site like Facebook or Twitter. And you go from one app uh, to the Facebook or Twitter plugin, and suddenly you have more permissions. That's what we're trying to solve here. So I'm going to take a look at this GPS Applant, which is the screen that we were just looking at, and take photo click. This is how I've written this method. I've used the same example for many, many years, and this is how I've written this method, but now that's not good enough. Uh, we have to see if the user has granted permission for the camera first. If so, all is well. We'll go ahead and take the picture. If not, we need to request that permission in real time. Now you see there's an if test here, and in either outcome of the if test, I want to invoke this logic. Uh, I don't want to copy and paste it though, so I'm going to choose refactor. And then I'm going to go to extract. Whoops, this is one of the hardest ones to do. Probably a lot easier to just uh, try to remember the shortcut control alt M. But refactor extract method, and we'll call this one invoke camera. Now, I've created this logic in a previous video, so I won't go over that again. But essentially, this is the stuff that will call the camera with an implicit intent. You see, it's an implicit intent because we're passing in a string, not a class. Okay, so invoke camera. Well, I only want this to fire if we're sure that the user has permission already to invoke the camera. So I'm going to say if, and we'll say check self-permission. This is a kind of long one. Okay, and we are looking for manifest.permission.camera. Uh, one second. Uh, and that should be uppercase camera. Okay, and that's just an indicator that says camera permission. Okay, uh, equal equal. We'll say package manager. Manager dot permission granted. This is simply a constant that says, okay, that permission has been granted. Now we have to import this uh, manifest permission camera. So alt enter, whoops, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, alt enter to handle that. And then open curly. And then our existing invoke camera logic, as you see here, and we'll tidy this up a bit. And then close curly after that. Now we'll add an else part, and the else part means 
we are here if we do not already have permission to invoke the camera. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to request permission, but we have to do it using a kind of callback mechanism. So first, any permissions that we want to request, we need to put in an array. So I'm going to say string, uh, square brackets, permission, request, equals, I can, I can do this one of two ways. I can do equals new string, and then with the capacity, like we traditionally implement an array, or I can use the little curly shortcut, which is a little easier in this case. So open curly, and then I'm going to say the same thing we have up here, manifest permission camera. Now that looks funny, that syntax manifest.permission.camera, but all that is is pointing us to a constant, and the constant is named camera. It's a string under the covers, that's all that is. So you see string array declaration on the left here. Believe it or not, this is a string that we have on the right. Uh, it's just a string that's represented in a constant. All good there. Now we'll say request permission. And you see, once again, this has a relatively long, well, not a terribly long signature, just kind of a long name. Request permissions. And we're going to put in that permission request that we have identified up above. The uh, variable, let me throw on line numbers here. The variable we've declared on line 40. So request this permission. But now, if you remember when we did start activity for result and on activity result, we have a fingerprint because on activity result can be invoked from multiple activities. So we have to attach a fingerprint, uh, and that fingerprint is going to be a unique identifier so that when the callback happens, we know who is calling us back. So let's do an old fashioned 867 5309. Uh, the number is insignificant. That's why I'm using 867 5309. As a matter of fact, we don't want a generic number like, I mean, we don't, we don't care to see this number. It's not, it's not describing what it's doing. A better idea is to make a constant because the constant we can give a descriptive name and then we'll remember what that name is as opposed to just some random number. So control alt C to generate a constant and we're gonna call this camera underscore permission underscore request code and enter. Okay, like so, that's fine. So now we are going to request permission from the user. Now, what's going to happen at this point is it's going to ask the user for that permission. And based on the user's response, it's going to pass a value to another method that we're going to need to override. And this method is called on permission, uh, on request permission result. So you see, again, kind of a long name. This is where the shortcut really helps, where you can start typing a method name and then uh, Android Studio makes a suggestion and you just hit enter and then magically boom there is the overridden method from our uh, superclass. Okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say we'll go ahead and leave the super call in and then I'm going to say if and take a look at this parameter up here it's something called request code. Remember that that's our fingerprint that's what we sent on line 42 when we prompted the user to accept this permission. At this point on line 48, we're receiving a response from the user, but this could be for any permission request. So I'm going to go ahead and use this fingerprint to make sure that I'm hearing back from the camera permission request. So if request code equal equal boom, uh, camera permission request code. Okay, now I need another one. I'm going to say if grant results. You see that last item we have there, grant results. If grant results zero, because we only requested one permission, right? Equal, equal, package manager dot permission granted, just like we've done up above. Package manager permission granted. Okay, then we're going to say, boom, invoke camera. Notice how we're calling that method that we extracted earlier because we're calling it from two different possible locations. So we put it into a private method so that we can reuse that logic um, regardless of where we're calling it. Now what's the else part here? We want to remember the else part. The else part means that the user said, no, I don't want to grant this permission. So in that case, we just want to tell the user, 
why the camera is not appearing. I'm going to say toast dot make text this comma and then we'll say cannot take photo without permission. Now we really want to put that in strings XML so that we can internationalize it, but that's a topic for another video. Toast dot length long show it for a long time and then show. Now I'm going to save and deploy and let's take a look at the results. Now the app has been built and deployed and let's see what happens when I take photo. Now you see we didn't see this before. Remember this is the point where it crashed. So I'm going to go ahead and choose, I'll tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and choose allow this first time around. And okay, don't worry about that. That is an emulator issue. Just with this emulator I have not set up a camera with it. But you see it did go to the camera. I went into the AVD manager and I've enabled the emulated camera so we can dig in. I choose take photo and you see sure enough here's the emulated camera. I can snap a photo. I can click the OK and everything's good. It's pretty easy to imagine what would happen if I started the app again on a fresh AVD and chose deny. It would simply show the toast that says the camera's not available. So I hope this uh, has been helpful. In this video, we looked at check self permission kind of as a pre-check to make sure we have a permission. And then we saw request permission, which will prompt the user uh, to approve or deny a permission. And then on, per on request permission result will be invoked after the user has accepted or declined a permission. And from that point, we can go ahead and try the operation that requires the permission one more time. Thank you.